بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم how are you students now we had a very interesting lesson which was simple basically it was about the uh, grammar lesson so let's just move on with our lesson here we have a lot to do talk about today in our new lesson now first of all we have the title which is two is better than one just to refresh your memory we have uh, the grammar lesson we talked about other others and another now in these structures we took the differences between the three words and when to use each one of them we have homework page number eight now we did the first part so we are going to see number three here they like their cat so much that they are talking about getting kitten so we have here what did you write we have here another kitten so just please check your answers we have here number four you can keep that pen i have two or three number two or three pens you can see that we have here the plural so we have the answer is going to be other five there are six people in line ahead of us so we have here six and we can see that there's the noun people so we're going to say that we have here six other people cover your mouth when you are when you cough sorry so that won't catch your cold so i'm talking about a pronoun here and not just one because we have your won't catch your cold we are talking about others seven i just recovered from a cold and i'm already am or i already am getting one which means that we have here another so check your answers with me moving on to the second exercise page number nine we have here we did also the first two now just to remind you now we have here to write whatever uh, example comes into your mind number three two of my three sisters have brown hair i can say for example the other has red hair we have also english isn't the only class i have on mondays i can say my other class is biology Attractive is one synonym for pretty. Another is good looking. My backpack is ripping. I need another one. We're not the first people in line. There are three others in front of us. Number eight, one thing you should do for your health is exercise. Another thing you should do is eat healthy foods. Now we have here, I read them quickly because these are open examples, our open sentences. You can write something similar to them, or you may have written even better sentences than the ones that I have here. Just to point out that I used in these sentences, other, another, and we have here others also. Moving on. The other part that I took in the grammar lesson was the emphatic do. Now the emphatic do here, we have used it for these rules that we said to emphasize, to stress, and it can be used in different tenses. We have the exercise page number nine. We started with uh, the first two. I have the third, emphasize. He needs to find a job soon. So we have your needs. We have the verb with an S, which means that I am going to write, he does need to find a job soon. And here, be careful when we used the uh, emphatic do here or does, just note that you have to, uh, of course, to delete or omit the S. I asked my friend to join us. Now, I want to emphasize here, I'm going to say that I did ask. I have here did because the uh, base uh, verb in the first sentence was in the past. Five. This store has the best selection. So we have here, the store does have the best selection. Of course, I have here, does. It came from the base ver verb or the main verb has. The teacher noticed you were absent because it was something in the past. I'm going to say the teacher did notice that you were absent. Moving on to our last exercise here. Now, if remember that we matched and then we emphasized so we did the first part which is e and b 
To complete, we have number four. I didn't have a lot of time, F, but I managed to finish my homework. Please check with me. Number five, she doesn't want to go shopping, but her sister wants her to go shopping. Leaving us with the last two sentences or the par parts, we have here, although she's a bit quiet, D, she has a great sense of humor. Now, was, this was the first part in the sentence. The second part was to emphasize, I can, as you can see here in these sentences. So we have your number four. I didn't have a lot of time, but I did manage to finish my homework. She doesn't want to go shopping, but her sister does want her to go shopping. Although she's a bit quiet, she does have a great sense of humor. Now we are done with the homework. Here, just to uh, remember, as I mentioned before, that you have to connect and uh, you can use your own examples just to rem uh, remember the, uh, the lesson that you took. Either it is vocabulary, grammar, or whatever part. Now you can see that we have your you can do it, or you can do it. We have your do just to remind you that I can say that you can do everything. So we have here do can be used uh, to emphasize. And we have here the example or the quotation, leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. Another thing to remember, some days you need to work hard, other days, other with plural days, are a chance to relax. Now, don't forget that you need to do both. Now, since we are talking about working, here in these examples, you can see that uh, what kind of work do we have here? We can see that there are students, they are working. Now, from the young man that we have here in the first picture, you can see that this uh, young man, he is studying maybe abroad. Now, let's just think a little bit. I want you to visualize or imagine with me. Imagine you are studying abroad. Just visualize the situation that you are finished with studying from school and you are going to study in a university um, abroad in another country. So imagine here, how would it be like and how would you feel? Now, there are many things that you can feel. You can feel, for example, scared. You can feel excited. You can feel homesick. Now, when you just imagine that you are in this situation, what are the difficulties students face when they are on their own? Now, you are going to study in another country. We are imagining. There must be some kinds of difficulties that you face when you are abroad. Now, what are the difficulties? You can see, for example, difficulties concerning money or balance between different things. Studies, homesickness, social relationships, accommodation and personal chores. Now, of course, you will be living in uh, um, a dorm or a flat or whatever. Now, here, there must be personal chores that you have to finish. Now, there are ways to make life easier. So we gave examples for some of the difficulties that students who are studying abroad face. There are ways to make life easier. There must be uh, different solutions. Now, we are going to meet Adnan and Badr. Adnan and Badr here, they are going to be the stars of our lesson here. Now, they are both studying in New York. Now, in your book, you can see that we have here, Adnan and Badr teamed up to help each other while studying in New York, which is going to be our conversation lesson in the book. Now, we are going to move on and see what we have for our objectives. We have here, number one, to describe and list some difficulties that students in foreign countries face, which we already did. Explain new vocabulary in their own words. Predict the meanings of words from the text. Number four, to correct given sentences according to the audio. 
Number five, to build a conversation about teamwork. So don't uh, forget that the basic topic that we have in Unit 1, which is about teamwork. So we are going to see how Adnan and Badr, they are going to team up together. Number six, to use negotiating phrases and sentences. And number seven, apply real talk in new sentences. So you studied before in your uh, previous year, uh, English, of course, and we had uh, real talk. Now, page number 10, in your book, we have the conversation lesson. So before we start with the conversation, I would like you just to read the questions that we have here about the conversation. Now we have the first one, what problem are Badr and Adnan trying to avoid? How do Badr and Adnan divide up the chores? What chore does neither of them want to do and what solution does Badr offer? Now here we understand now that they are students who study in New York. And from the idea of chores here, we understand that they are sharing their place together. Now we are going to listen to the conversation between Adnan and Badr. I would like you to open your book and listen to the conversation with me. I'm really excited that we're going to share an apartment to save money while we study in New York. I am too. But, you know, a lot of friends end up arguing about chores. So, I was thinking it might be a good idea for us to divide up the chores before we move in. Yeah. I do think we should discuss that. I'm sure we can work out a fair division of chores. Of course, we'll each clean our own room. And since there are two bathrooms, how about if I clean one and you clean the other? That's fair. And each week we can take turns cleaning the rest of the apartment. Hey, do you want to do our laundry together so that only one of us has to go to the laundromat each week? We're on the same wavelength. I was just going to suggest that. I really don't like folding the wash. If I wash the laundry, would you be willing to do the folding? No sweat. And how about cooking? I don't mind cleaning. But cooking is really not my cup of tea. Would you do the cooking if I did the cleaning up? Sorry, but if there's one chore I hate, it's cooking. Well, it looks like we're going to be eating a lot of takeout. So, moving on, we have the conversation we listened to between the two boys. Uh, we have here Adnan and Badr. Now we're going to just see what are the answers. Now the first one, what problem are Badr and Adnan? We understand that they are trying to avoid arguing about chores. They do have chores, but they're trying to find solutions for them. The second one, how do Badr and Adnan divide up the chores? So what did they agree on? They do have different rooms. They have something that they share together. So what did they do? We have here by cleaning their own rooms, taking turns and dividing. We have the third question, what chore does neither of them want to do and what solution does Badr offer at the very end of the conversation? What is the thing that they don't both want to do? Which is, we have here, they both don't want to cook. So Badr offered eating takeout. Now we have here the uh, conversation. It is about something very interesting here, specifically when I say that you'll do this and I'll do that. Are you willing to do this and I'll do another thing? So which means that we have here negotiating. They are negotiating. This is a verb. It comes from the noun negotiation. Negotiation is the noun from negotiating. So the conversation here, it is based on negotiation and how to agree with someone else by making some kind of deal together. So they are teaming up. They are teaming and they are negotiating. Now moving on, we have here the points. We want to see what we have here. There are phrases for negotiation. We have here, we can say, for example, how about if I wash the uh, dishes, for example, 
and you clean the floor. This is an example. I think it would be fair that we have here fair. It would be fair if we exchange these uh, chores. I'm sure we can work this out, period. So we have here, this is a sentence we are negotiating, but at the end, I'm sure we can work this out. Okay, I'll agree to do something if you will do the other. Would you be willing to if I do something else? Now here note that these phrases, they are not of course just used for uh, dividing chores. They can be used in many things as long as you are teaming up. Now for example, school projects or work or something that you are doing or a plan outside. So there are different things that you can use negotiation for. Now moving on, let's get real. Now, if you remember that we took before something about real talk in our previous years. There are three phrases in our conversation. Now, when we say on the same wavelength, now again, just imagine that there is a wave. We are on the same wavelength, which means that we are thinking the same thing. No sweat is a simple phrase, which means no problem. And we have here, not my cup of tea. Now we have here, you can just differentiate between the two phrases. When I say spill the tea, this is a yes, a real talk phrase, but not my cup of tea is a polite way to say that you dislike something or you do not approve. Now these are the phrases that we have here in the real talk. Your turn is to role play with a partner. Pretend that you are dividing up responsibilities for something you are doing together, such as working on a school project Figure out a list of tasks and then discuss who will be responsible for each task. Use the phrases for negotiating. So this is in your book. You are going to just, and you do it uh, mainly, that you have a project together and you divide between you. So remember that teamwork, it stands for together, everyone achieves more. Now, teamwork, as we mentioned, is everywhere. If you remember that we took these examples for space, we have here uh, sports, we have different places that we did, did uh, discuss before. One of these places that we mentioned is at the hospital. Now, when we said that people, they work together, we are going to connect again, and we are going to go a little bit outside the classroom here and we are going to see. We have here, there are many Saudi doctors known worldwide for their achievements. Do you recall any of them? So there are famous Saudi doctors. It may become in mind any name. Uh, some people, they are very famous, not just in Saudi Arabia, but also worldwide. Now, one of our famous doctors is Dr. Abdullah Rabia. Now, Dr. Abdel Rabia, he has many achievements. We are going to talk about some of his achievements in the listening lesson. So you are going to open your book again. We have here, before we start with the listening, let's just see our objectives. Now, we are going to give the meanings of words based on the text, the listening text this time. Enumerate Dr. Rabia achievements. Listen and organize ideas in order. Display acts of kindness and assistance to others. So we are talking about teaming up. So of course, this means that we are going to help other people and they are going to help us. Now you are going to open your book on page number 11. Page number 11, we have the listening exercise. Listen to our summary about Dr. Abdullah Rabia, a famous pediatric surgeon then number his achievements in the correct order, which is in chronological order. So pediatric surgeon, which uh, you know about Dr. Abdel Rabia, that he's famous for certain skills or certain a kind of uh, medicine. Now we are going to see the sentences that we have here. Now my hint for you is to focus on certain words in each sentence. We can say, for example, that we have in the first one, he and his team, there's nothing special here, but you can just focus on surgery and Polish twins. 
The second sentence, just take a look, highlights some of the words that can help you. For example, executive director, national guard, or health affairs. Number three, he realizes, and we have here, become a doctor. Graduates from King Saud University. This is basically something simple. We have here, after with that, assistant professor at King Saud. You can also highlight in the sentence after that, masters in pediatric surgery. So we are highlighting certain words. Honored Polish community this time. Now note that you are going to highlight certain words. Now for example, like Polish is repeated. So you are going to highlight this time the word community. The sentence after that we have here appointed Minister of Health. And then we have here the member of Canadian Board. And the last sentence you can highlight, for example, Royal Court. So let's just listen. Abdullah al Rabia was born in Saudi Arabia. From a young age he knew that he wanted to help others and chose medicine as his career. He proved to be an excellent student and, by the age of 25, he had received a Bachelor of Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery from King Saud University in Riyadh. He continued his studies in Alberta, Canada, where he was awarded a Master's in Pediatric Surgery in 1985 and became a member of the Canadian Board of Pediatric Surgeons in 1987. Dr. Rabia soon returned to Saudi Arabia and became an Assistant Professor of Pediatric Surgery at King Saud University and a Pediatric Surgery Consultant at several hospitals in the Kingdom. From 2005 to 2009, he held the position of Executive Director General of Health Affairs at the National Guard, and in February 2009, he was appointed Minister of Health. In January 2005, Dr. Abia and his team made medical history by separating a pair of conjoined twins after 15 hours of surgery. This was the ninth successful operation of its kind performed at the Health Affairs at the National Guard, Medical City in Riyadh. The twins' mother, from Poland, had heard of the excellent facilities there and requested help for her daughters. The 14-month-old girls were brought to the kingdom after Crown Prince Abdullah generously agreed to the operation. When the two girls finally came out of the operation theater, the relieved mother told reporters, the day of separation of the twins is the happiest event in my life. In February, the Polish ambassador held a special reception to honor Dr. Abia and his team for their outstanding achievement. This operation and others since prove that humanitarian assistance and medical care have no geographical borders. Okay, so we're going to start with our exercise here. Now we have here the first one, you read, you highlighted, you listened. Now we are going to start with the very simple sentence, which is going to be, we have here number one. Number one, his achievement, the first achievement was that he realizes he wants to become a doctor. What did you choose after that? We have number two, what did you listen to? We have number two is going to be, he graduates from King Saud University, which is also something simple to start with. Now, if you followed my instructions when I said to highlight certain words, it would be easier for you when you listen to the rest. So just check with me what are the, num no, uh, the order or what is the order of the sentences. So what comes after that? We have here number three. He gets his master's in pediatric surgery. Number four. He is a member of the Canadian Board of Pediatric Surgeons. Number five, he is assistant professor at King Saud University. Number six, he becomes executive director of health affairs at the National Guard. Number seven, he is appointed minister of health. Number eight, he and his team perform surgery on Polish twins. Number nine, he is honored by the Polish community. And the last one, number 10, he is appointed as a consultant in the royal court. Now, I am sure that you have the correct answers here and you 
ordered the same thing or the correct uh, order that we have here. So always think positive. Now use the phrases and use the words that you learned here in the lesson to give your positive ideas and share your thoughts. For example, I realize that being a team member is important. This is a simple statement that I used and we have the basic idea of our unit which is about teamwork. I am going to end my lesson with a hadith. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مثل المؤمنين في تواجههم وتراحمهم وتعاطفهم مثل الجسد إذا اشتكى منه عضوا تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمى. Now here in this hadith we uh, realize that uh, there are many kinds of teamwork and even if we are not talking about the basic idea of teamwork we understand that it is something in our daily life together and of course as Muslims. Now our outline of the day. We had the discussion, we built conversations about teamwork and recalled recognized Saudi doctors. In our conversation part, we listened, answered questions and predicted meanings of words from the text. We used negotiating phrases in sentences and apply real talk in new sentences or applied. The last part that we had in our listening lesson, which was to enumerate Dr. Abdel Rabia achievements and organize ideas in order. So we had an enjoyable lesson here. We talked about different things. We are going to complete in our next lesson, inshallah, with another part. So until then, just practice and be ready. <laughs>